if all's gone to plan, this should be a replacement ES339. Seven days until I got me my guitar back. It's got a nasty ding there on the box. It's not physically broken. Not so lucky though with another guitar that I bought at the same time, arrived at the same time as this one. <sighs> I do make a meal of things, don't I? Well, that's a nice looking thing. Ridiculous, isn't it? Perhaps that's why they're called Guitar Guitar. You have to send the first one back to get one that works. You don't come here for 10 minute videos, do you? Hello, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Guitaristas. I've got a box to open today. That's exciting, isn't it? Now, if all's gone to plan, this should be a replacement ES339, Epiphone ES339 from Guitar Guitar. If you follow the channel, you'll know about, about three weeks ago, we reviewed the ES339, or we tried to. We got about halfway through, and then there was a problem. And on the neck pickup, uh, what have we got? Oh, what's going on there? I don't appear to be getting a reading from the neck pickup, <laughs> which doesn't bode well. Yeah, same. I'm not getting a reading from the neck pickup, so um, we'll uh, we'll have to investigate. Oh fuck's sake! It's all we need, isn't it? Right, oh. So it looked like it was a faulty switch or some wiring somewhere. In the neck position, we couldn't get a reading of the neck on its own. We were still getting both pickups. So couldn't really finish that review. Couldn't play it properly. So what to do? <laughs> um, I decided to send it back rather than faff around and, and try and fix it. Poking around inside a semi-hollow is not one of my most favourite things to do. So decided to send it back. And uh, what we did to, just to round off that film is... Uh, went online, filled in the returns form for Guitar Guitar, and booked it for collection. Reason for return. The item is faulty. Tell us why this didn't meet your expectations. Um, is a wiring fault the neck? pickup. That's all I need to say, isn't it? There's a wiring fault on the neck pickup. So that was all pretty straightforward. It was collected the following Monday as planned. And I got an email from Guitar Guitar the next day, the Tuesday, to say they'd received it back and it was going to go through their check-in process to check it was faulty, I suppose. And then they'd be in touch about a replacement. But that could take up to seven working days which I thought was a bit surprising, but obviously they get a lot of returns. So fair enough, let's see what happens. I didn't actually hear anything at all until the following Monday. So it was like six days. And then I got a, a shipping notification that uh, the courier had got a guitar for me. And uh, it did say in the email, it, it was an ES339. So I thought, great. Um, and here it is. It was delivered the next day. So it was seven days until I got me my guitar back well it is what it is <laughs> and here it is hopefully I don't know for sure because I haven't opened it yet it's got a nasty ding there on the box but that's fairly normal for these they do double box them I'm, this has got just an Epiphone box inside and lots of packaging hopefully so hopefully it's in one piece and hopefully this one works Shall we open it and see what we've got? Let's do it. I've got my butter knife at the ready. Pretty 
pretty well packaged. Lots of this packaging paper. The trouble is with this, it, it, so it smells of sick. So you kind of come in the next day and you think, oh, what's that smell? And it's this, this stuff. Their warehouse must stink. Ooh, no tape on the box. I mean, I am, I'm wondering if they've sent me the same one back or a new one. I hope it's a new one. Let's have a look. Oh, hello. It's got a sticker on there. What's that? Can you see that? Hmm. Mm. It's unusual, isn't it, to have something like that? Anyway, <laughs> let's crack on. And all will be revealed. Uh, it's a different one, I can tell, because it's got no scratches on the scratch guard, pick guard, and it's got the plastic on the pickups. Because obviously I'd taken, I'd taken that off and I'd played it a little bit. Because I'd taken it home, I'd played it a bit at home. I hadn't plugged it in until literally I was reviewing it. So I didn't know it was faulty. So I'd literally got halfway through making the film before we, we sussed it. So here it is. It's a new one. They've detuned it. So it all looks to be in one piece. One of the things I said I'd be interested in looking at is how the scraping on the replacement compares to the other one because I thought it was a little bit poor because you can't see the edge and as you can see you see probably even worse on this one actually that's a shame you can see I mean it's not just the angle it is a little bit misleading but on the top bout bout mark at me you can see there's a line on there I'm sure you can see that on the camera there's not really anything just kind of a Unless you tilt it that way a little bit. So, yeah. No. There's a bit of an improvement there, but not there. It's kind of it's kind of pushed the other way. Anyway. Well, they've sent me the right guitar. It's not physically broken. What we'll do now is we'll plug it in and see if it's all functioning correctly. And then we'll play it and see what it sounds like. We'll have a good old jam on it, I think. Go for all the pickups, see what they sound like. And then we'll come back and, yeah, round up, round up the ES339 review. I'll, I'll tell you what I think of it. That's what it sounds like unplugged. Sounds really nice unplugged. Okay, let's see what it sounds like plugged in. It does work this one. I tested it as soon as it arrived. Um, not so lucky though with another guitar that I bought at the same time, it arrived at the same time as this one. Um, I had a bit of a problem with another semi-acoustic. I'm going to show you a clip of that in a minute after I've showed you my knobs, okay? Let's do this first, and then I've got another little insert I'm going to pop in. So that's coming up. For now, um, bridge pickup. We're using the Princeton 65, which I'm going to use to demo all guitars going forward. Uh, because I've been using it anyway for about, well, God knows, Six months. I don't know how long I've had it now, but I've been using it ever since I got it on the basis that it, it gives us an even playing field for everything. Any, any guitar that I review, if I plug it into the same amp, it will give us some kind of idea of, of you know, how, it, how they compare, I suppose. And also we know that Princeton is, is a great amp. So 
if it sounds bad, it will be my fault, basically. We know that. It's a given. So Princeton 65 again today. On the board, I've got a soul food and I've got my rat pedal. And if I step on them, you'll see that, won't you, via Crocs cam. So let's hear it. See, that's what happens. The minute I start playing, I, <laughs> I miss, I play a bum note. Someone said it, I was talking last week about how hard it is to play and, you know, as soon as the camera's rolling. And uh, actually, there was a great comment and guy, guy said, yeah, you try it. <laughs> you guys try it. Put a camera on yourself and then see how good you are. I'm trying to do this. It's easy, isn't it? But I, I fluffed that note, didn't I? Nice riff, that. See, I did it again. I'm brilliant at home. Okay, let's just go through the tone and volume controls. Fully up on the bridge. down to about two. I suppose there's quite a usable range there. Let's try the neck. Does the job, not fantastic. I'm just grateful that it works, to be honest with you. Let's try the tone. Soul food and rat. That's how you get that sound. Add a fuzz, rat pedal's great, but any kind of fuzz and a bit of uh, drive. Beautiful sound, isn't it? Let's put that into something. Turn those off for a minute. And uh, what was I playing last night? Oh yeah. I won't be able to remember it now, but I'll have a go.
Oh, there's a sample of some stuff. Yeah, it's um sounds all right, doesn't it? Sounds all right. I think the neck's a bit a bit woolly. Oops. See what it sounds like on the playback. Quite often I think that it sounds woolly in the room, but um when I hear it in the playback, I think, oh, actually, that sounds quite nice. But... So we'll come back in a minute and we'll, we'll chat about this. Before that, though, I want to show you a clip of another guitar that arrived from Guitar Guitar at the same time as this one. It's another semi-acoustic, and sadly, there was a problem. Have a look at this. To make a meal of things, don't I? Here we go. What? You have no idea, have you? You really don't. You have no idea. Uh, that has been said of me quite a lot as well. Um, right, well, here it is. It's another Epiphone, obviously, and you've seen this. So let's get this out. Get rid of the box. Stop mucking around and show you what we have here. Ta-da! It's a 335. Another 335. Look at that. In sunburst. Vintage sunburst. Oh, that's a nice looking thing. Yeah, I bought another one. I bought another one. I was kind of thinking of anyway, because when I got the 339 and the Sheraton recently, I thought, yeah, I really need another 335 so I can make some more of those long, complicated comparison films. And I thought it'd be fun. I thought it'd be fun to get a different colour. I thought it'd be fun to see if this one feels any different to the... the Cherry one that I had. I'm sure you've seen those films. I didn't really like it, or I didn't like it at first. I did loads of mods to it, and it was good, but I didn't, you know, it didn't feel like a piece of me. I, I don't know if this one will or not, so I thought we'll give it a try. But what really swung the balance, as shopping on Guitar Guitar, as you know, doing the returns thing and that, Bam, special offer, discount. I paid £399 for this. It's cheaper than the cherry one I paid, about 460 for that, I think. And these are, what are they? I think the retail price is about five, 550 something like that. So you'll have to work that, work that out in dollars, chaps. Um, but anyway, £399. Get in. Here it is. So... This is going to be coming up on the channels in a couple of weeks, I suppose. I I don't know how I'm going to do this because I've already done a, a kind of a full on review of the 335. So I don't know. I'm going to work it out and, and invariably there'll be some comparisons. But uh, anyway, more center block content coming at you soon. Hang on, don't go. I'm back. So I just quickly plugged these two in to see if they were functioning properly. The ES339 seems fine. Uh, this one, however, let me show you. This happened. Or nothing. Pretty much nothing's happened. That's where the problem is, isn't it? Because if you're in the centre, if one's not working, it kills the lot, doesn't it? I 
fucking ridiculous, isn't it? It's going back. <laughs> it's going straight back, unfortunately. It's just mad. I wonder how many of these semis are like that. This is, was two in a row. Different faults, obviously. I mean, we know it's difficult to wire these things, but you'd think they, because of that, they'd check them, wouldn't you? Anyway, I just wanted to record that, so I've got a film of it. But that's knackered, isn't it? Yeah, it's that pot there. So that's a clip of uh, the unboxing of that guitar that originally appeared last weekend over on the TV channel. Uh, and I thought I'd throw that in to show you guys today because <laughs> there's a problem with it, wasn't there? So, yeah, two in a row. Three in a row, in fact, if you, uh, if you include the Flying V, the Epiphone Flying V, that incidentally, <laughs> I can throw this in now quickly. Here it is. It's still for sale. Uh, this was part of a film where I sold, was it four? Four, three or four guitars, I can't remember now. There's the film. I can't imagine why that's still for sale. But it is. The link to my reverb shop's in the description box if you fancy that. Make me a cheeky offer. I've already dropped the price. Could be yours. Uh, where were we? So, yeah, back to the, the, the 335. So, yeah, including the Flying V, which has been repaired, incidentally, and it's fine. Three in a row. Perhaps that's why they're called Guitar Guitar. You have to send the first one back to get one that works. Guitar, guitar. See what I did? Ching. Anyway, I've decided not to send the 335 back. I'm going to try and fix it. <laughs> With you. We're going to try and fix it. Probably next week, actually. It's only this pot. And, uh, only this pot. <laughs> it's only this pot. Well, as far as I can tell. So anyway, I emailed them and I said, look, is broken. They were very, very apologetic. Of course they were, and they said, sorry. I said, offer me a discount, because I'd like to try and fix it. So faff now, I don't want to wait a week for a replacement. We've got films to make. So they said, yeah, they offered me 40 quid, which I could probably get a luthier to do it, to repair this for 40 quid. In fact, I know I could, um, but I'm going to do it myself. So, <laughs> I accepted that, so we still got it. The reason, one of the reasons being, is I, I really like the look of this, as I, as I said in um, that clip that you just saw. It, it's a bloody nice looking guitar, isn't it? So we're going to keep it, and we're going to try and fix it, and that will maybe form part of an episode, or depending on how long it takes, it could be an entire episode or a series of episodes. I'll try not to make a meal of it like I did the last one, but of course I've had a little bit of experience of doing this now, so my thinking is it's going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to be the master of <laughs> just just whipping out a pot and putting it back in again uh, to show you. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll stay tuned and we'll, we'll find out how that goes, shall we? Let's put this one aside. And get back to the uh, ES339. Sounded all right, didn't it? There's a, more playing coming up. Play out jam on this as well, so you can hear it a little bit more. And what I realised about this, uh, that playing was straight out of the box. All the playing on this, this week, straight out of the box. It didn't even occur to me. I hadn't even changed the strings. All I did is tuned it. I didn't check the action, the intonation, or anything. Uh, so that either means it was perfectly set up out of the box, or I'm just lazy. But anyway, it felt all right. And as I've said before, I'm of the, um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, um, school of thought. Um, which reminds me, coming up, I'm just going to talk about last week's film and a lot of the comments, because a lot of it was, if it ain't, it ain't broke, so don't fix it. So I'm going to talk about that in a bit. Let's finish this first. Great guitar. Lovely, affordable guitar. I I mentioned, yeah, the scraping or whatever it is here is 
it's not done, I suppose. You, it's not been done very well. It could be done better, but it's an affordable guitar. The full review of this uh, is a link there. Don't forget the first bit of this review where we took it apart. So, you know, if you want all the specs, the weights and measures, check that out because it's all there. This was just about finally getting to play it. Uh, and it sounded great. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not excited about it. I'm not, I'm not excited about it, but I just don't think it's my thing, really. I can easily imagine it being someone's thing, your thing, maybe. I haven't got a lot more to say about it, to be honest with you. It doesn't really get my blood pumping, if you know what I mean. Oh, I was going to compare it to my Pelham Blue SG, colour-wise. The SG's definitely got a little bit more green to it. It's a nicer, it's a nicer shade of Pelham Blue. And it's not very sparkly, whereas the 339 is. So not quite as sexy a shade of Pelham Blue. Quite sparkly. I think the sparkle maybe puts me off a little bit. Uh, but I can quite easily see how you, or some of you, would love it. Uh, but all in all, I don't think I'll probably keep this for that long. I will keep it to compare with the 335 once I get that working and the Sheraton and maybe some other stuff. Because there's definitely, well, there's definitely um, content there, isn't there? We need to we need to see if it sounds any different. It certainly sounds different unplugged, and, and I'll show you that in due course. Not this week. We can't get everything into this week. So I think that's the 339. We'll hear it again on the play out, but hopefully there's enough info there and the earlier review as well. Don't forget, there's the, uh, <laughs> the links are in the description box anyway. So check that out if you're interested in this guitar. Right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Last week's thumbnail. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that. My last video. Yeah, it wasn't, as you know, it wasn't my last video. It's what they call clickbait. And I did that to kind of prove a point to myself or to make a point that sadly, YouTube is so much about the thumbnail. It really relies on people clicking on the thumbnail early on. Obviously, you know, all YouTube or some YouTubers have lots of subscribers. They're the ones that drive the success of a video. If it gets clicks out of the gate when you publish it, if it gets, you know, good clicks, YouTube goes, oh, that must be good. I'll show it to more people. And that's how our audience grows. And sadly, that's often without any relevance to how good the actual film is. Well, it isn't. It kind of down the line that becomes important you know, how people respond to the film. But initially, it's those clicks. So I kind of did that to prove a point. You know, if I just put a, a big question mark uh, on, on, on a thumbnail, a guitar and a question mark, some people do that. They go, oh, thousands, tens and thousands of clicks. What's that? You know, that's what YouTube's about. It's a bit shit, to be honest with you, and it's kind of, you know, it's all, it's all kind of feeds into what I was talking about last week, that YouTube wants short form content, you know, get to the point. Anyway, the feedback that I got from <laughs> my last video was was fantastic, overwhelming, humbling. Thank you so much for all your support. Basically, you all said to me, nah, don't do that. Don't change. Just do what you're doing. That's why you watch what I do, this nonsense because I ramble, because of all the pauses. <laughs> and and there's just what I do, really. It's kind of, it's not, you don't come here for 10 minute videos, do you? That's what you're telling me. Well, that's what, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of comments from last week. It's, it's incredible, really. And so 
just so overwhelmingly saying, don't change, <laughs> please. Please don't change. We don't want jump cuts. We don't want, we want waffle. You want waffle. You want me to talk bollocks. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change. I don't think I could change anyway. And a couple of people sort of pointed that out anyway. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm not capable of being slick anyway. Um, all the, you know, the, the jump cuts and stuff like that. Yeah, it's shit, isn't it? So I'm not going to do that. If you see jump cuts in my films, it's purely through necessity. You know, <laughs> I've got nothing else in my arsenal. But I won't do it to tighten up uh, pauses. See what I did there? So, look, here, so here's the plan going forward. I'm not going to make an extra video. I'm not going to publish more any more than one video each week on YouTube. If you want little bonus films, go to the TV channel. Pretty much every week I do something on there. So there's extra stuff there. However, I am going to make extra content on YouTube. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to make these films shorter. I think I'm going to make them longer. I think what, what this is, is, this has really been, all the feedback, it's really helped to focus my mind. I think you could tell I was kind of trying to work it out, trying to think it through, work out how I can game the system. Ultimately, the only way you can do it is just to make the best content you can and, if, and your audience should organically grow. That's, you know, really all we can do, you know. Fuck clickbait thumbnails. Fuck making films that young people want to watch. We don't want young people watching this channel, do we? It's stupid. Not, I don't mean you. If you're young and you're watching this channel, I don't mean you. It's the others that are not watching. You're cool. But, you know, the youngsters, they're all out there playing with their TikToks and stuff. You know, they've got, they haven't got an attention span, have they? You lot. My audience, you come here for the peace, hopefully, the peace and quiet that my long pauses <laughs> have fooled you. That was quite, was that eloquent or rubbish? I'm not sure, I haven't, can't work that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a longer film or I'm going to aim to make a longer film every week. And what, what has occurred to me is that all this extra short, shorter stuff that I could put in a shorter film, I'm going to include it in each weekly episode, I'm going to do extra stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to fit in, you know, shorter, shorter bits. I mean, I've already done it. We put the 335 in today. I slipped that in. I go, oh, look, this happened. You know, so that's what I can do. I can kind of refer to stuff that might have happened and put in a little clip and show off some of the stuff that I've got. Some of, I've got some fantastic amps. I've got some fantastic guitars. If I make a, uh, an entire episode about, oh, look at my guitar. It's uh, any stuff that I've done on YouTube uh, with my vintage guitars that are by far the best guitars that I've got. No one's interested. You know, I did a, an episode on, on my steel SG, which is brilliant. And, and I know you watched it, but nobody else did. If you look, it's one of my, it's about the, it's, it's, I don't know, I can't, What's, what's the term? It's one of my smallest, lowest rating videos. And that's what happens. If, so if I make a film about my super reverb, it's a bit too niche, you know. And unfortunately, it is about the numbers because at the end of the day, I need numbers to get the ad revenue up. And the ad revenue is shit. And if I get low numbers, it's even shitter. So it's, unfortunately, there is you know, the dollar does play a part. So I've got to try and game the system and work it out without actually becoming shit as well, or any shitter than I am. I mean, you might think I'm shit anyway, but apparently most of you don't. So I'm going to take your word for it, not yours. So the plan is I'm going to try and turn it into more of a, more like a TV episode, really, each week. There'll be a main theme, a guitar to review or wh whatever it is, you know, modify or whatever it is. And then I'll insert some other stuff. 
um, some shorter films, a couple maybe. Um, and I think that's quite exciting because it gives me an opportunity to do what, all sorts of diff different stuff, you know, without having to turn it into a full length feature, you know. I don't know what it'll be, uh, but I do know what I've done this week to, to give you an example of what I'm in talking about. It's this, let's join me downstairs in uh, Studio 3 and have a look at uh, a new amp that I've bought this week. Over to me downstairs. I'll be back in a minute just to wrap this up. Here we are downstairs. <laughs> I've got a new rig. Look, it's an e Electro Harmonics MiG-50, which is a faithful reissue, apparently. Faithful reissue, the Sovtech MiG-50. Um, which is quite a sought-after amplifier. Now, everything I know about this stuff I got from the JHS show, because Josh Scott, it's Josh Scott, isn't it? I think that's Josh Scott at the JHS show. is a big fan. He owns them all, in fact. He owns all of the Sovtex. Um, well, he doesn't actually own them all now because he gave one to uh, Dan at uh, that pedal show. Uh, but apart from that, he's got them all. So Electro Harmonics had to make a reissue because some other people wanted some. And this is it, the MiG-50. But this is also very sought after now because uh, I don't think they're making them anymore. I think this was a limited edition and then they, I think they stopped making them and then the tube shortage because of the whole Russia thing became a problem because this has got, got Russian tubes in it, I think. So yeah, it's quite a thing. Anyway, <laughs> I was very lucky that uh, the guy that owns my local music shop, uh, the South End Music Exchange, he owned this and he decided to sell it. So I nabbed it quick before somebody else did. You see something like this and you go, oh, I'll have to have that because everyone will want one. And it, you know, they probably don't, but <laughs> I bought it anyway. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn it on and... Um, See if uh, see if it sounds any good. This is apparently based on based on yeah based on the Fender Bassman, same as the the um, the JTM forty five Marshall, same as the Fender Bassman. You know everyone was copying that because that was the that was the amp that everyone wanted, wasn't it? Back in fifty nine, wasn't it? Fifty nine Bassman, I think. I haven't done my research for this bit, to be honest with you. I just thought we'll come down, plug it in, and try and play some stuff on my Eastman Juliet. Recognise that? Uh, there's a review of this guitar on the channel if you missed it. There's a link. Check that out. Eastman Juliet. One of my favourite guitars at the moment. So this little insert section is brilliant because it gives me a chance to play some of my favourite guitars and play with my new rig. So I'm gonna do that now. I'll stop talking, turn it on. Stand by. As you can see, I've already got it um, plumbed into the ox. It's a 50 watt amp. So, you know, it's gonna be loud. What we'll try and do is get a reasonable sound out of it without squashing it too much. So, uh, I've got it in a channel two because that's the one that we should use apparently according to Josh and I've got all the EQs on noon and they're Josh's settings so I'm copying those as well at the moment I've got a volume on noon and I've got it into the aux uh, on speaker setting four which is going to be too loud but let's have a let's find out with the uh the pickup's dimed. It's too loud. <laughs> Not ear splitting, but um, it would be if I went. Um. No drive pedals or anything. So let's just go down, let's go down to three. 
You can hear it squashes it a bit already, can't you? Sounds quite nice though, doesn't it? very boomy that might be because of the cab it's a 212 this now what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna try out a new attenuator that I've got so bear with Okay, I hope you can see what I've done. <laughs> I've just noticed the screen's so tall, <laughs> it's out of the uh, picture here. But yeah, I've got one of these, well, I, Joe Bonamassa screens, I suppose. I've put around it a studio thing. Um, whew, it's loud. It's on, I've just realized I can't actually, I can't get to the controls. I have to walk around in a minute, but wow. Go and turn it down a bit. Yeah, it didn't stop that much sound, to be honest with you. I can still hear it really loud. the answer <laughs> back to the drawing board it didn't work at all I thought it'd make a massive difference it didn't it kind of made a difference but <laughs> it was just all the noise was behind a bit of plastic so uh, yeah back to the trusty ox attenuator for now anyway squashes it a little bit but it does sound nice um <laughs> that's saying when you get to Sorry, I stopped mid-sentence. When you get to kind of halfway. It, <laughs> I stopped mid-sentence again. It doesn't get massively louder when you dial it up more. Thank you. 
there you go. Uh, you dig in, it sounds quite nice. It does sound quite nice. Yeah. I'm getting my eye in then. I always imagine I can put myself in this situation and have a little noodle and sound really good. <laughs> it doesn't happen. I'll keep practicing. <laughs> See what I mean? So that, you know, we've got license now, opportunity to, to muck around a bit, to get involved in different stuff. I might even, maybe I can interview some people. Maybe I'll do some interviews. I don't know. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's an experiment still. You're part of the experiment, so let me know what you think. Do you think this is a good idea? Have I waffled enough for you this week? Um, come back next week and we'll, we'll continue this discussion it is an ongoing thing and um i want to make sure that this channel uh continues to be fresh enough to to keep your interest i don't want to lose the audience that i've got i want to try and evolve without messing things up yeah so i'm listening to you keep letting me know what you think um I'm trying to freshen up my intro sequence. I haven't actually cut that yet, so I have no idea how it's turned out, or even if I've done it. So um, let me know if I have. If I have, let me know. I mean, I'll know by now. So you let me know what you think, if I have, and uh, if you even think it needs anything like that. I'm trying to turn it into a proper a TV show that you will tune into every week. And hopefully every week there'll be something that interests you, even if it's not the guitar that we're reviewing or fixing or whatever it, whatever it is. If there's not that, hopefully there's something else and we can... I've, that's enough now, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I won't push me luck. Thanks for watching. Come back, same time, same place, next week. And uh, find out what we're up to then. Yeah. Cheers. Tough now.